<laughs> Hello, beautiful people. It is Serena from Archangel Connection, and I am doing a 15-minute session, and we're recording it so you get to see it too. Now, I'm, I'm, I may use the lady's first name, but you don't know her. Um, keeping her nice and private, but I wanted you to see a full session so that you have that opportunity. And that's it. So we're just going to start going. So I have my lovely lady here. And I start every session, just so you know, with a grounding. Okay? So you're on board now, right? Yay. So I'm going to, and you're more than welcome to join in. But so I always do, I do actually a lot of the session with my eyes closed, just so you know. And uh, I always do the grounding with my eyes closed too. You're welcome to join in and follow along. Okay? Okay, actually, can you say hi to the people so they know I'm not just talking to myself? Hi, people. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hi, people. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. So, grounding. So, sitting comfortably. Shoulders relaxed. I have my feet on the ground. You don't have to. You can be in the air. You can do this in bed. It's no worries. The intention of grounding is to connect our body's energy down into earth energy. And we do this using visualization. And because I know you're not on a chair, I'm gonna, we're going to use a special visualization that you can use before sleep all the time. And it's the anchor grounding. So at that center space of your body, just above your belly button in that solar plexus chakra area, I'd like you to see a big coil of rope. And that rope is nice, heavy, hemp sailing rope. Okay. At one end of the rope, we have a nice big anchor, an iron anchor. And we're going to allow that to start moving out of our bodies, down towards that space where we're standing or where we're sitting at the surface of earth. That's it. We're just going to allow it to move, recognizing that as it moves, that coil of rope uncoils and follows that anchor. So there you have that anchor below you sitting on the surface of earth. Now we're going to watch it move into the earth. So it punches through layers of grass and soil, down through layers of rock, down, down to that center space of earth, that's orange and red, moving with very fast, smooth energy. And as our anchor enters into that center space of earth, it hooks in, and that beautiful, smooth energy enters the anchor, follows all the way up that rope, and gently floods our bodies with that beautiful orange and red healing energy. At the same time, we have the trailing end of rope. The other end of rope, we're just going to send that down our right leg, out our heel, so that it touches earth as we walk. We're going to use that as a garbage chute. And every time we recognize fractured energy, anger, pain, frustration, worry, doubt, fear, all that stuff, it doesn't serve us long term. What we're going to do is just allow it to tumble out down to earth. And as it lands, she just accepts it as fractured and transforms it into smooth energy. So we have fractured energy out and beautiful smooth energy coming into our bodies. So even if you're sitting in a chair or lying down, you should still feel that nice magnetized feeling to earth, that nice connection. Now I heard monkeys in the background. Is everything good? Yes, I just kind of ignored them and I think they went away. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> if you have to just say something, sometimes my eyes are closed and I'm not paying attention. Just let me know and I'll stop. Okay, I didn't know if you'd be able to hear them. I, I heard a little bit of giggling. Some, I hear all kinds of stuff, but I, I heard that human giggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, good. So as long as everything's cool, we'll continue then. So we always start with introducing our four. So we have the lovely 
Michael, behind you. He comes in really, really big. Like, really big. So that's curious. We'll talk about that in a moment. Then off to my right, I guess that's your left, is Gabriel, standing patiently. Uh, behind me is Raphael, right in front of you. And then off to my left, now your right, is Uriel. Huh. Curious. Okay. <laughs> like, hmm, what's going on? All right. Because the intention is for you to be filled and surrounded by that light, by their energy, and that's that's the idea. So we're going to start with Michael. All right, lovely okay. Michael. <laughs> Michael's our warrior <laughs> angel, right? So he is all about protection and safety and security, things like that. But when I say warrior, I mean he's here to do work. He actually, not that everybody else doesn't do work, but he's here to do some serious work to release you of any sort of baggage. So uh, what we do that's called uh, cutting of cords. So he'll come with a sword or he'll come with whatever, some cutting device. It's very entertaining. <laughs> so here he is with sword, intending to cut the cords. Now there's three different categories of cords we talk about. There are the emotional cords. So an event has occurred and you have an emotional connection to it. Normal. Easy for him to get rid of, but it's also easy for you to put back. So that's, that's more work that you need to do on your own. But right now, we're just going to whoosh everything away so that you can really focus, which is awesome. Um, the second category of cord are the relationship cords. So every relationship, there's an intention to have a beautiful, supportive, loving cord attachment. Um, and sometimes, however, there are fractured cords. Uh, a fractured cord would be jealousy, anger, things like that that happen. And um, it's interesting. I'm not, I, I don't understand why I'm seeing so many little kids, little kids, little kids, attached, not attached, attached, not attached, attached, not attached. I don't know what's going on. Do you have like a huge family? What's, what's that all about? Like me personally? Kids? Yeah. yeah. Well, not, no, not, I don't mean you've popped out 20. I mean that like literally, did you grow up where there were lots of little kids? Was it the neighborhood? Like what? Something's weird. Lots of little um, kids. Yeah, lots of kids in our neighborhood. My dad's side of the family is a really large family and okay. lots and lots of cousins. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know. Well, no, that makes sense at least because, you know, when there's when there's that many, it's attach and detach, attach and detach. So I'm guessing you didn't live close, but when you got together, it was like, woohoo, big party. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I don't see thing, anything too scary. I've got one that looks like a friend connection here, um, like a girlfriend who... Oh, I didn't want to say that word. Okay, I just say whatever comes. So you can always deny and say no to anything I say. But I heard the words backbiter, which suggests, obviously, that this individual was up to no good with you. Like, she pretended to be your friend, and then not so much. So this would be a while ago, obviously. Probably teenager, early 20s. I don't know how old you are. You look very young to me. I'm 33. <laughs> awesome. You look great. But, um, thank you. Um, you know, I haven't had a huge issue. I guess just one person comes to mind okay. in, in my older years, I guess, but maybe mostly in elementary school. Okay. I had some issues. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, so that uh, fractured cord like that doesn't serve either party, so we just remove that right away. That's no worries. Um, and if the person is still thinking about the two, then I'll watch it get reattached, but... I think we're good. That's all smooth, um, at least what I'm looking at. The third category of cords are the ones that most people are really interested in. These are the past life cords. I don't ooh, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so every life has a, an intention, a purpose, right? And if you achieve that purpose, yay you, you take in that new knowledge, you take in that understanding, it changes your vibration, and you take that to the next level, wherever that is, whether that's a new life or wherever, some sort of other space. But sometimes we're unsuccessful and we don't achieve our life's purpose. And that could be because there was a war or some other catastrophic event or somebody really domineering was in our lives and pushed us to marry the wrong person, live in the wrong space, go to the wrong career. Um, so that would be a reason why you would be unsuccessful. When you're unsuccessful, that's when a cord can attach. And when I say cord, it does. It looks like a great big octopus tentacle to me. So, curious. We went straight for your jaw. But there's a... 
It's no worries. It's no worries. It's fine. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing you don't have any sort of jaw issues, but uh, so lots of people Never. clench and do all kinds of weird stuff, so we don't worry. The But what I'm seeing is, jeez, that's really quite uh, curious. As soon as I say it, it's being removed, FYI. Like, I don't want you to freak out that you're walking around with stuff. You're not. It's It's just an indicator for me. <laughs> It makes it a little clearer when there's a physical attachment. So, Michael's going to show us his past life. Where do you want to go? Why do you keep using the same... He keeps using... I'm looking above you there, but he keeps using the same words. Um, I don't like that. Mandible, mandible, which means jaw. So, um, what are we talking about? Show me this life. Well, why was it unsuccessful? Oh. Oh, Really? That is a shocker. Okay. Um, unexpected and surprising when I'm looking at you right now. Um, so it's funny. So the past life I'm looking at, uh, there was, uh, how long ago was this? 1800s. So to me, not very long ago. Um, and it looks, is it? No, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say British, but it's not. Because it's not in that area of the world. It, there was a there was a journey. So here's the story that I'm getting here. It's a male life that I'm looking at. You're maybe in your early teens to mid teens, early to mid teens. So you know, 13 to 15, somewhere there. There's the journey across ocean that I'm watching, and part of it is to you know the standard, looking for a better life less persecution. Part of the issue is, though, that when I'm looking at this life, there is a deformity on the face. Like a, what we would call something fairly minor nowadays, but because that's because our surgical techniques are so much better. But at the time, this deformity um, caused a lot of upset in the family. Um, meaning, oh, he'll never, he'll never marry, and he'll never do that, and he'll never, he'll never. A lot of that. So huge attacks on, you know, self-esteem, etc. So the parents, not that they weren't planning on moving, your parents, they weren't planning on moving anyway, but they were, um, hoping for this new opportunity and better life. Um, so that was the intention there, or, or their intention. The problem is with that life is that you were supposed to stay in Wales? Okay, I said Britain, but okay, Wales, that's fine. You were supposed to stay there. Um, that was part of your intention for that life. So you, you can't learn the same things, especially when you're starting a brand new life in a new country. So um, that's the only issue there. There's nothing un nothing horrible else about the life that I'm looking at. It's just there was this attack, so much attack on self-esteem and self-worth that I don't know if you've had issues with that this life. But, um, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm getting a yes. <laughs> I'm getting a yes. Um, and it would be unusual because you're truly, you are a very lovely lady so that I'm looking at with my eyes. That's <laughs> not where self-esteem comes from, right? It's from within. Doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. And uh, so, yeah, you would have been spending, when I look at a past life, because there's many, many, but the one I'm going to look at it, that we're looking at here is a mirror for this life. Like what's going on? So it would be like you're going along perfectly fine. And then suddenly this just attack of, self-loathing or self-hating or whatever the deal is would just show up and you're just in it so that was that's that connection there so we're hoping that your self-esteem is way better now and you're working through and because you're gorgeous yes we're happy you have good self-esteem now yeah i'm or, happy with it is it um, still an issue does it still come up uh sometimes it does okay because when I go out, especially when I go out with my children, people don't think I'm their mother, and they think I'm somewhere between the ages of 12 and 16, and it really bothers me, yeah. and people often don't take me seriously. I really have to work hard to prove myself, oh. um, I think because, well, I don't know, maybe I just, they, they believe maybe I don't have the the years of wisdom, not that I have lots or anything, but I mean, please, I'm not 20 or anything anymore, you know, yeah. so... Well, even at 20, yeah. like years don't really mean wisdom. Wisdom is, it just is, you know, you meet little two-year-olds, you're like, wow, you're smarter than 50-year-olds I know. Like, it's just. Yes. Yeah. Standing out. Are you also a very petite lady? Like, I'm looking at you up close, but are you petite? Is that an issue? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay. I'm like, I'm five foot two mm -hmm. and a half. Mm -hmm. And a half, yes. And, but like my build, mm -hmm. I'm very 
petite. Very slim. Very slim, slender mm-hmm. lady. So that would be difficult then, that that whole that whole issue with uh, body image then. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we've we've removed that cord. Very curious this whole body connection because you're um what I'm seeing, even in that life that we looked at, that past life, there's there's full confidence, con- competence, not with my speaking, but full competence and confidence. That was not an issue. <laughs> it was just that outward, like you're going along, everything's great, and then it's like somebody else comes and reminds you that from the outside, they see something else. Yeah, that's exactly my problem in, in this life. Okay. Because, I mean, when I'm doing my thing and I'm with my friends and I'm at home, I feel great and I like my body. and. Yeah. And whatever, but then I'm reminded when I'm out mm-hmm. that I'm like different or something. I have no idea. Nah. So that's okay. You're working on it. Stronger you are, the <laughs> higher your vibration raises. That just changes. People just stop giving you the, the gears because they're not looking at the outside anymore. They're looking at this. Yeah, I've actually noticed that lately. Nice. Things are different. Nice. So. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Michael. And we're going to move to Gabriel. Gabriel stands in the east for me. Um, and he does this on purpose. The east is sunrise, new beginnings, new opportunities. Uh, Gabriel also, for me, is in charge of Akashic Records. So all the lives you've led before, all the information you've gathered, you know, essentially your general knowledge. And because of that information, he will tailor your new opportunities in a different way. So making sure that you're getting, you're paying attention to what's coming up. So what is it we're looking at right now, Gabriel? Um, are you done having babies? Or is there another yeah. intention? No, goodness, okay. no. Okay, do you have a very small one then? Do you have a very young babe? Like two? I've got, I've got twins. They're oh. four. Okay, wow. Then I have an older, an older son. Okay. <laughs> Four-year-old twins. Yay. That's, yes. That was yeah. a surprise, yes? Or are there twins in the family? <laughs> no. Surprise. Okay. Very much a surprise, Very yes. Very entertaining. Um, so I'm confused about the career that he's showing me. Um, were you quite deep into your career and then you started to have the babies and obviously you had to walk away for a, a bit? Are you, are you in the middle of a shift? What is this? What is he showing me? He's showing me like a, a change in your career idea. Yeah, there's definitely a change in my career idea, but I don't know what it is. Okay. I'm just researching all sorts of different topics. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome thing. Um, are you, how intuitive are you with your research? I guess is the question. Are you doing this online, most of your research? Um, I'm doing some of it online. I'm doing some of it through books that I've taken out of the library and some movies. And then also just along the way, I just seem to be kind of attracting people Uh that, um, it's just interesting and very, I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence. Nope, not at all. Um, and the suggestion here, again, this is Gabriel. So he's suggesting very much that we're just going to keep dropping things in your path and it's like you it's like you're picking them up along the way and you're just sort of gathering them into your bag and uh, yeah because I'm like very skeptical so but I'm starting not to be because I'm just like a very black and white thinker I think but I but I don't think I am I think I'm gray as well I think I can be gray as well we're all gray we, we really yeah. are, you know, and I grew up being black and white, like just mm-hmm. yes and no, and there's no maybe, and that's the end of it. So I really, I really understand. But as you allow the gray, things get really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you go, you know, like my intention is to learn exactly the sort of idea or, or where I want to focus and just like, where do I want to focus and just allow it to come and just boop, 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 boop. So you're getting closer mm-hmm. then to finding where you want to go next. Yeah, I think so. Feeling good. Loving it. (laughs) Uh, Raphael stands behind me in front of you. His color is deep emerald green. He's our healing angel. He is all about making sure you're physically in tune. He sends healing energy, etc. 
Well, that would be not be unusual. Um, did you have a C-section with the twins? No. No, you've, you've given birth naturally every time? Yes. Wow. Okay. And you're such, well, there you go. He keeps showing me that, sorry, that area of your body that there's some <laughs> issues. And I, well, where, why wouldn't there be? I mean, you're tiny and you carry two beings. So there's probably a whole bunch of, you know, muscles moved and stuff like that. Are you working out super hard to make sure everything's nice and solid? Um, I mean, I don't usually have an issue with my body that way or whatever, mm-hmm. but um, I do yoga. Okay, that's cool. But because I love it. Good. Because I I was fine. I bounced back um, from my pregnancy with the twins. My belly button looks a little funny, but that's it. <laughs> okay, so there was a fissure there then. Um, or- no, 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 I didn't have any issues, nothing. No problems. Okay. Why does your belly button look funny? Does it did it herniate? Because it was just stretched so oh. so mat so much. So like I mean, it didn't go back to the way it was before. Okay. It, All right. It's cool. It's just different now. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> I love that you're hearing that. It's just different. I'm just a little different now. Um. Okay. I don't understand what the black line is. Keep showing me a black line at that area. And if you weren't cut and there's no fissure, etc. You weren't born with a hernia? Why am I saying hernia so many times? No, um, I don't know. Maybe I have a hernia, but I have no idea. Like, I just went for my physical, and I checked out perfect. But Beautiful. the reason why I went for that appointment is because it's a long story. It's okay. messed up my cycle. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I thought that my cycle was re um i don't know coordinating Mm -hmm. to the moon cycle because of something i read and it actually turned out that it did awesome just this last full moon Mm -hmm. that was here so now i'm just kind of waiting to see if i'm going to get it again on the full moon okay coming up so i don't know like that would be the only thing there's nothing else really going on that's an awesome thing you don't take any supplements or anything to uh, balance hormones or anything like that no, not for that reason, no. Okay. Okay, but you do take a... You're taking something internally, yes, to deal with things like, I take like birth control? Well, no, not to deal with that. No. no. I just, I take vitamins and stuff and... Okay. Okay. Well, I, he... take, I take a supplement to get more protein because I don't eat a lot of meat. Okay. Or get a lot of protein, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. increasing your absorption then. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an awesome thing. Uh, he won't stop showing me the black, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything negative. But the the black to me, when he's talking, as soon as we start talking about nutrients, it's charcoal to me. Um, do your research, check it out, see if this means anything to you. But when you ingest charcoal, like you can take it in pills or powder or however it is, it absorbs um, um, toxins in your system. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Okay. Like, and so that might be helpful to you. It's something to look into. We're just going to suggest okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. Then we talk to Uriel. So Uriel stands in my West. He's my life path man, if you will, or in the word man. Um, he's this <laughs> huge, huge being. He always comes in as um, like a bodyguard, bouncer at a club, big brother, like huge. So you say Uriel and it's like, whomp, there's this enormous amount of energy there. And he's awesome. And he's been whispering in your ear. I find it very entertaining. So life path. And he's the only one who asked for a card. So I'm just going to, we'll just shuffle the cards here a little bit and see what I'm trying hard not to say your name. Well, obviously the one that jumped out is the one that we're going to look at. Huh. It's card 33. Now I know that probably doesn't mean anything to you. I'm just going to show you the picture so you can see it. All right. I don't expect it to mean anything to you. I always read the card exactly as it's written because there's something there that means something to you. Now, I thought I recognized this. This is the lovely Quan Yin. Okay. Quan Yin is the Bohisattva, I can never get that right, of compassion. Um, In the card, she represents compassion and kindness towards oneself. So stop being hard on yourself. Watch your mind and the words and judgments that you have about yourself. 
You are much kinder and more forgiving of others than you are of yourself. It can take many lifetimes to fully embody this lesson of compassion, but you're almost there. And this is one of the biggest openings of the heart center that one can experience. So I love these types of cards because it's all about that validation, validation, right? And just opening up, etc. And we already talked about this. You have good self-esteem. It's others that come to you and you're like, hey, what, what are you, why are you challenging me and judging me? And it's, it's almost like you have to protect your heart chakra at that time. I'm, I'm, that's normal. Mm-hmm. That's what we do, right? But the stronger and stronger you get, the stronger and more open you get. And just like, I love me, too bad for you. Um, just stronger and stronger. And that's what you teach your children anyway. But as you embody it, pff, just changes. It's just an awesome thing. So, yeah. You're all working on you right now. (laughs) And that's a beautiful thing. Did you have any questions or anything else before I uh, sign off for my four angels here? No, no. I thought that was a great reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. (laughs) I am going to stop this recording for the people. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.